Animation is a medium that is very responsible for molding furry culture. When you go to a furry convention, a fur meet, or even messaging someone new online, one of the very first questions that may come to mind is, how did you discover the furry fandom? Most of the time, it's because of a movie or a television show that they have loved as a kid that featured an anthropomorphic animal. These shows then lead you into certain fandoms that are obsessed with those mediums, and eventually will lead you into the world of the furry fandom. Hello everyone, my name is Jason Blade, a cartoon analyst for around 4 years and also have been a part of the furry fandom for about 8 years. Doing my enjoyment of both animations as a whole, as well as being a part of a niche but very welcoming community, I have seen many movies and shows that have impacted the furry community from a wide scale. From movies as old as Robin Hood and The Lion King, to the more modern additions like Zootopia and Bluey. Even with all of the movies and shows that have placed that spark of interest about this certain culture, I feel that this movie probably defines everything that the furry fandom represents and how it's visualized from the outside. I'm going to be talking about <laughs> December 14th, 2021, DreamWorks published their first trailer of The Bad Guys. And uh, <laughs> to say that the trailer spread like wildfire is an understatement. Which isn't surprising considering the fact in this introduction of this movie, the animation is probably the most unique and crisp anyone has seen at the time. The style choice was incredibly stellar, the voice acting was top notch, and the story it's wanting to tell, while somewhat common, was certainly welcoming to most. When it comes to the furry fandom, people absolutely loved this trailer. But there was one moment that I believe put a stamp on the film being everything that the fandom is about. Are you okay, ma'am? Thank you, dear. You're such a good boy. I'm not joking, that one line basically defines what a lot of furs want in their lives. I wouldn't be the first to tell you that the fandom is filled with wolves. Like a lot of people who started off in the fandom basically had a wolf character. Heck, a very long time ago, I had a wolf character phase for a second. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Canines are very common, mainly due to how easily a lot of us humans gravitate towards them. We see how they ooze with natural charisma and excitement and are very expressive of how they feel. And they absolutely love attention. I also think that a fur's need for attention is probably higher than your average person. With the fact that some people within the fandom do dive into the animalistic aspects of it, Probably a lot more than they like to admit. This line gives a lot of dopamine. Being called a good boy makes you feel accomplished, more appreciated, and gives that warm and fuzzy inside yourself. So when witnessing a character with such a wonderful design get put on that ecstasy, a lot of furs have that relatability and, well, their creativity runs wild. Fan art was being made left and right. There were plenty of videos being made about the bad guy's trailer on YouTube by furries. A whole ton of art of him with his giant f***ing and his f***ing and he just like takes it and he just f***s it and then he f***ing f***s it. DreamWorks set everything up for this movie to grab this community's attention just as much as Utopia did way back in 2015. However, 
The difference between these two trailers is that Zootopia more so explained the technical definitions of what a furry is, the bad guys actually showed the world what a furry is. Here's how they did it. I remember watching a furry react to the trailer, and made a certain criticism on making all the background and minor characters human rather than fully diving into a furry world, seeing it as a lazy choice so that they can get the movie out in a timely manner. However, I do want to argue against that, to the point where I say doing that will take away why I believe this movie represents what the furry fandom is. The focus of the movie is how everyone surrounding this crew always had a negative reaction towards them. No matter where they go, there's always a disdain and fear whenever they are spotted by those that aren't involved. They are potentially seen as dangerous and point at the events to bring shame amongst them, whether it was true or completely fabricated. The bad guys' attempt to steal the golden dolphin for the first time is a legitimate reason to look at them negatively, while them getting blamed for the stolen comet is not. I bring this point up because I do see the human characters as the general population, those who look at us with distaste and anger with what they hear about fairies. Whether it's the truth of former popular figures that have done terrifying things, or the fabrication of a false narrative that is spread by a group to push a political ideology. They do not understand what furries are, and most of the time they don't even try. Even with all the good that could come from the furry community, one misunderstanding or bad apple will make those who have concerns about us confirm their suspicions. Much like how the bad guys were framed when the comet was stolen. However, the few that do try to listen and understand who furries are, they do see that we are more than what society likes to paint us as. The furry fandom isn't perfect by any means, but really you can say the same for any sort of community or fandom. As long as we can understand the niches and quirks and continue to try to build and improve the space, I think those who are willing to give us a shot will see the positives within this community. Much like how the bad guys were able to picture it with the general public in this movie. Now, I've said this a lot in the last segment, but I'm going to reiterate this. There are a lot of attention whores in the fairy fandom. The aspiration for popularity can be deemed to be pretty high, whether it's wanting to be an influencer, being recognizable for their talent, or for really diving into their animalistic side. In any case, a good amount of furs want to make a name for themselves within the fandom. Having to pursue a career in art, fursuit making, dancing, or their general personality. Leaning more into that personality, there are a few that love to dive into the furry stereotype. It's similar to how Mr. Wolf and his crew has aspired to be known as the best at what the public perceives them to be in the beginning of the movie. I really think it's important because there's a particular scene that really proves the point that Mr. Wolf bites more than he can chew, much like some individuals in the fandom that do get into believing that degeneracy is what will keep eyes on them. That scene was when Governor Foxington essentially tried the bad guys. So breaking down this scene, they had a successful heist. They were ready to celebrate that as well as Mr. Snake's birthday, even with his discontent. So when they turned the TV on, they saw that the news was talking about their latest scandal, which obviously they all took it well, until Diane told the public what she feels about the bad guys. We all know how dastardly the bad guys are. You bet we are. But more than anything, <laughs> I feel sorry for them. What? This statement clearly affected Mr. Wolf, and he immediately strived to have a hold my beer moment, to really put a stamp on his legacy of being the most recognized criminal. 
And we all know how that went. So long, suckers! I think we've all witnessed this from quite a few furs that have skyrocketed in popularity from trying to one-up their previous shenanigans that further pushes narratives that make the fandom look bad. The most common would have to be those who define that personality of being a horny furry. One of the most recent and well-known examples of this would have to be Maned Wolfie. I'm not going to dive too much into him, cause there are plenty of videos about this dude. However, I am going to give a quick synopsis of what he has done that is definitely very sexual and will be considered gross to some viewers. If you are sensitive to this stuff, I highly suggest to skip this part. So what did Main Wolfie do that garnered so much attention and mixed reaction? Well, uh, he and a good number of friends decided to have one of those mature parties and ejaculate on a pizza. He even decided to post it on Twitter about it, which clearly exploded with mixed reactions. People memed on it, people were disgusted by it, you get the gist. So how did he decide to want up that event? Do the same thing, but for charity! That didn't go very far, thankfully, because the charity in question did not want to be associated with a biohazard. But you can see what I mean when it comes to furs who want to thrive on some of the stereotypes that may not be as pleasant. While yes, it is a much more vulgar case compared to Mr. Wolf and his crew trying to grab the biggest score to prove a point, they both feel the desire of wanting to be defined by that stereotype and be the most recognizable within it. Now I do want to take a step back and look at more of the general creativity and interest within the fandom. Now I know what you're thinking. How does a movie like The Bad Guys present a lot of hobbies that furs in the community dive into? Isn't furry a hobby in its own right? Well, yes that is true. There's a lot more to furries than you might think. One of the bigger examples of this is Mr. Wolf's love for his car, because believe it or not, a lot of furries are into motor vehicles and actually know what they're talking about. While there isn't anybody that is defined by being a car mechanic, there are a lot of furs that enjoy talking about certain vehicles they own or aspire to ride at some point. There are also furs that are into science that can be represented by the amazing and intelligent peeps like Dr. Wildlife, Dr. Wolverine, and Sailor Roo Scout which we know as the Cheeky Professor Marmalade. We have a large variety of techies in the furry fandom like Zenith, who likes to create furry-related AI. Hell, there's an entire article that discusses how it's very common to see furs in that particular field like Miss Tarantula. Not to mention the whole idea of cosplays, cause, you know, fursuits, looking at Mr. Shark here. And we can't forget about the art, dancing, singing, there's a lot of talent to be had within the fandom, which we do see a lot within the movie itself. Well, yeah, it isn't the main focus of the movie, I think it's quite easy to compare the hobbies and interests these characters portray to those that are within the furry fandom. And when those outside of the community see the amazing talent, some can't help but be impressed with the skills. Like how the general population sees something similar in the award scene. The main point of the movie is always to consider yourself to be more than what society thinks of you. That's a pretty common theme within the furry fandom itself that makes me feel that this movie is the perfect fit when I think about a movie that defines the furry fandom. The sense of acceptance and aspiring to have that has always made me love the fandom as a whole. We all have quirks, but we tend to work our way around that as we have that similar interest in the life of an anthro. 
Sure, there are some individuals who embrace the stereotypes of a fur that general population will never try to understand. It still doesn't change the fact that there are a lot of individuals within this community that embrace themselves through their talent and love. Something I think the bad guys did a very good job of expressing with Mr. Wolf and his crew. They often get mistreated simply because of what the general population see at face value instead of getting to know them. However, once those who are willing to give them the opportunity to show that they are more than the stereotype, they will find ways to deliver and show that they may not be as bad as originally thought. Until then, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.